So Google this week um, basically published some data on one of its artificial uh, in, uh, intelligence supercomputers. And they came out with a bit of a flash bomb saying it was more uh, it was more powerful and more efficient than competing NVIDIA systems. Okay, just pause there. NVIDIA, 90% of the market. NVIDIA, um, you know, pretty much the uncontested hardware winner of the generative AI boom, at least declaratively at this state. And a company, by the way, that I was recommending on CNBC Squawk in the middle of July or August last year when it was literally down 70%. So I just wanna be very upfront. I see the value, I believe in NVIDIA, but I am very interested in this kind of new yeah. architecture and posturing that's going on in the market. Because right now you've got kind of a couple of things that are going on. You've got layers of abstraction, which is you've got hardware for AI and then you've got software for AI. And so nothing has been a more critical layer of abstraction for the mass adoption of powerful conversational generative AI than open AI and ChatGPT. This has brought it into the limelight. We're seeing it embedded into software like Bing. You've seen it push the speed of innovation from companies like not only Microsoft, but Google, Adobe, and others um, at a breakneck pace. Well, Pat, you and I love to say you can't run this shit on air. Oh, no, I swear. I swear. Oh, we're going to get, uh, get the explicit now. Yes. Okay. I've always wanted one of those. Um, or Connor, we can post prod beep that out. But you know what? Um, I don't know. I I I I'm, I feel good about myself. I don't use F five times during an hour long conversation. So. I'm passionate about this topic. So the bottom line here is what's going on now is you've got a you've got a war going on among megatech. You've got a war for who's leading what. Of course, we know none of this runs without uh, hardware. NVIDIA is certainly a player, but you know, companies like Google are developing hardware. Companies like AWS, which I recommended last week on TV, uh, as a semiconductor company are making hardware. Um, and then of course you've got companies like Intel and AMD that are gonna suddenly become very interesting because anytime a company has over 90% of a market, they become exposed. Um, Pat, especially when they start competing with their biggest outlets, like you know a cloud offering that's gonna compete with AWS and what they're doing rather than working with. That's a really interesting thing you pointed out and I thought was really interesting. We'll, we should talk more about that at some point. Um, my overall take, Pat, this is mostly, this is, remember with quantum supremacy and when Google and IBM and all of them would kick back and forth? I feel like this is what we're at right now. I do yeah. not feel like this really is that important except for the fact that all these companies wanna let the world know and be very declarative that they're in the game. And after Google got end around by Microsoft a few weeks ago with the open AI thing, and absolutely got put on its heels and had to come out with BARD prematurely and that flopped, Google, I think, came back and said, no way, not again. We are not going to allow all the other companies to quietly be declared the winners of the AI race when there's probably no company with a better data training set of data than Google. And there's no company that's, I would argue there may not be a company that spent more on real R&D around AI than Google. And this to me is sort of a shot across the bow to the whole industry that Google's here to play. I think this will impact their cloud business. I think this is gonna impact their overall business. And I think this is why I call it fluid. Google does have a bigger role to play than they're being given credit for today. Yeah, it is, it is fascinating. And I, I think that Google's move to call out NVIDIA uh, had two planes on it. First of all, there was an investor plane which says, hey, Google, if, you're, if, if everybody's using the same hardware uh, as each other, how are you going to differentiate there? How are you gonna lower costs? If you look at uh, the entire um, generative AI revolution, it's expensive, right? I think uh, we're looking at between 100 and 200 times the cost to do a search on uh, GPT versus just standard index-based uh, search. So there are cost elements uh, to that. I think the other element, and I'm waiting for this shoe to drop here, is how that gets integrated into Google Cloud and the enterprise customers, right? Um, and how does Google you, you know, differentiate, let's say, versus Trainium and Inferentia uh, out there? It looks like uh, Azure is pretty tied up, at least, you know, today 
and not going to do their own uh, inference or, or training uh, hardware. The one thing I wanted to point out, and you know, it's in, in the Chiron uh, right up here, is Qualcomm, right? Uh, there was an ML perf um, test that, that, that went out, and lo and behold, who shows up? Qualcomm. And what a great uh, follow-up to our interview with Qualcomm CEO Cristiano Amon at Mobile World Congress, where uh, we interviewed him and he talked about uh, all of the investments that they're making into edge AI. And sometimes we forget that there is this, this edge where you do inference. I mean, sure, you can do that inside of the data center. You can do this on the edge. But uh, Qualcomm actually beat everybody in some power efficiency tests. So, for instance, the amount of images per watt, uh, as, as an example. And if you think about it, uh, and the pressure that boards of directors are getting uh, for uh, the environmental uh, elements of, of the business, that has to count for something. And I'm convinced uh, more than ever that, that we will see uh, Qualcomm in the data center or the data center edge, and whether it's the A100, the A200, if it takes 10 years uh, to get into this market, Qualcomm is, is going to make a move. And then when you connect that with what they're doing on the client PC, uh, in the move they're making inside of of Windows, I think this clearly puts Nvidia on the map. If there are any doubters that Qualcomm should be put in the mix uh, of of potential people who can benefit big time from this, I think everybody knows that when it comes to premium Android smartphones, Qualcomm was going to make a major play here. I mean, they have a very high degree of market share. Uh, here. I don't think that's going to change anytime soon in the Android market. But when it comes to infrastructure AI, this is uh, was quite a, a move here. And I almost, first of all, I was glad that uh, Reuters picked up on this. Uh, Stephen Ellis is a longtime uh, reporter uh, on, on chips. I've had a, some good relationships uh, with him. So congrats uh, on Qualcomm. And as we always say on this show, competition is good. Competition drives innovation. Competition keeps costs uh, at a at a reasonable uh, point. Yeah, I think we, we, we hit that one. And good call on adding Qualcomm to the discussion, a company that I think will continue to surprise in the space. And we know the edge is growing and becoming more and more critical, and we're going to have to do more and more inference on the device. That's also going to be an interesting inflection for the PCs, Pat, in the near future.